What's up guys, today I want to talk a little bit about what to consider when buying a snake. Many of us have heard of the basic questions to ask when buying a snake at a reptile show. So I'm just going to breeze over that quickly. Just ask if the snake is feeding, what they're feeding on, and how often. That is very important. So, um, and I mean, that is the basics just to get to, you know, having a healthy animal. And then you should know the care going into that. I mean, you should have done a little research. You should find out if the snake is right for you. Like for me, I have uh, racks in my closet. Obviously, I don't want anything that is going to get very big. And I don't want anything that's not going to fit into what I have now as far as if something needs to be kept at 70 degrees, it's not going to happen. Most of my other snakes are kept in about the mid 80s as far as hot spots goes. So you want to be cognizant that in the future when you put them in racks, you're going to want snakes that have the same requirement. But that's not really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is you know people are so worried about getting money on their investment and investing in reptiles the money, dollar, dollar bill, yo. so I want to explain for a few different species a few different snakes how to make sure you do that so I was looking on Facebook today and I saw that a very popular corn snake breeder had a snake that laid a clutch that you know was the best example of something I've ever seen so what happened you know I messaged him said how can I get these snakes so what you want to do is when you're buying a snake and there's one that you have in mind that you want, especially as far as a morph or maybe even, you know, a jungle carpet python, that kind of thing, um, you want to be ready to reserve the best animals. When picking out snakes, it's pretty much always worth it to wait around for the perfect animal. So you really want the best example of whatever you can find. Especially for corn snakes, things that are going to brumate during the winter, there's going to be a, a time in which they're going to lay clutches and breeders are going to have babies. So that time is going to be usually in about now they start laying. And then throughout the summer, you'll see babies come up for sale, maybe even some earlier clutches in June, stuff like that. And what you want to do is be the first person to pick through these animals. And it may be more expensive in the short run because the best animals are the most expensive but if you don't have enough money to begin with just to put out straight up for the animal always buy a female first females are going to take a little bit longer to mature usually recessive products i like to get a pair because when that male comes up to size i can breed them to females that i already have and you can get the project going but that isn't necessary most snakes you want to go female first just give them some time to mature so that the next year you can buy a male of the same quality. Um, it may be a little bit cheaper to buy a male and it may be a little bit cheaper because there's more produced. So year after year, usually mutations go down in price. So um, you may be able to pick up a male cheaper than you were the female the year before and have the female a year ahead. Also, you really wanna have a clear idea of where you want your breeding project to go. So for me, I'm waiting for uh, pipe-sided blood reds, but I want the best ones I could possibly get. So because there's so many people breeding snakes out there. I mean, so many people breeding everything, you know, that I have from jungle carpet pythons to corn snakes. So what's going to differentiate you from all the other people who are breeding? It's so worth it in the long run to get the best examples that you can possibly have because you post that animal up and they're sold instantly. You don't have to try you know, so hard to market your animals, get them out there because they sell themselves when they're some of the best in the world. Being selective means that it may take you a little bit longer to purchase snakes as far as you may be waiting around for a certain clutch and you may be waiting around for the perfect animal, but it will pay off in the long term. So what I'm trying to do is build a reputation for having the best snakes. So I don't want to bring in a snake that's subpar because I want my reputation to be only the best. That's why I'm really focusing on being very selective with what I bring in. That being said, when purchasing, we get pictures of parents, especially if the species that you are buying goes through a color change. So you may have jungles that start off pretty tan and black and then become black and yellow so you want to look at the parents and say hey what is this going to turn into you know or what is the possibility and then 
you know, from there, it's kind of luck to as far as um, what you get. So you may get from amazing jungle parents, you can get everything from decent babies to amazing babies. But you definitely have much more of a chance of getting amazing babies if the parents are amazing. And that goes for most other snakes, especially um, I think it's important to note that green tree pythons, you're going to have much a much better time um, going with a breeder who has U.S. captive born and bred chondros. You may be able to pick up a green tree python for $150 or $200 at your local show, but most likely that animal is going to be farm bred and or wild caught. So it's a going to be more aggressive for the most part b it's not going to be as hardy as the u.s captive born and bred green tree pythons c it could have parasites as well as you don't know what those parents looked like so you have no gauge of whether you are spending money on what may become a quality animal and green tree pythons their genetics are kind of weird so you can have a really amazing um captive pair that have some really crazy babies really out of nowhere and then some that just turn up regular green so it's kind of a crapshoot as far as that goes but it definitely pays off to get u.s captain board and bred um or you may be able to find a captive born green tree python for even uh, five hundred dollars so don't get confused by the way when you hear captive bred um, you want to make sure it says uscbb which means united states captive born and bred um, people will say captive born for their farm bred babies so just be cognizant of that and really avoid that as much as you can for for jungle carpet pythons what you want to do is buy from someone who has lineage of the animals um it's very hard to go to a show and find a quality animal you're going to want to scour online look through morelia classifieds um i believe it's carpet python classified page and i mean you can find some great line bred animals the animals you find on a table at a show, uh, they don't have lineage, they don't have pictures of the parents, they didn't breed them themselves. You never know. Um, there's so many people who breed, you know, coastal carpet pythons to jungle carpet pythons, still call them jungle carpet pythons. Also, there's people who try to breed to get jungle jags, which is um, a jungle coastal cross, but showing the mutation of jaguar, which in turn makes a crossbred animal, and then they sell the siblings as jungles stuff like that you don't want any of that or people say jag sib and then people think that that's a coastal carpet but it is a coastal jungle cross so there's a bunch of things to keep an eye out when it comes to carpet pythons so just make sure you're you're buying it directly from a breeder and getting proper lineage and you know figuring out what line they derive from there's only so much you can do with carpets. I mean, at some point they were all pretty much smuggled in from Australia, whether for a zoo or for private keeping. You can only bring lineage so far, but it's always good to still find someone who has done their due diligence to try to do their best to, to nail down where these animals are coming from. So just something to be aware of. You may think it's easier to buy an adult female, but people very rarely are selling good quality females because honestly, they're the biggest asset that you have so why would you sell a female that feeds well that produces well that looks amazing uh, most people are holding those back so when you get an adult female know that you have probably you know gotten maybe a problem feeder maybe something that has had sickness in the past so just be very cognizant when buying adults um, your best option is to buy babies and take the patience to grow them up um, the whole thing is patience that's really it um you know snakes take time to grow up not every, anything's going to happen overnight you're not going to get rich overnight to have great quality snakes good snakes that are going to breed and then offspring that are going to sell it takes time because you know people have been line breeding these animals for decades so don't expect anything to happen overnight so as generality there are a lot of breeders that specialize in either one species or just a couple species of snakes those are always great people to you know ask your questions to and buy your babies from so certainly use those resources there are people who are very very knowledgeable as a generality you know the big box stores some of the most popular resources for snakes as far as you know people who resell even big breeders may not have time to explain the little nuances 
of each individual species or even know the nuances of the snake that you're getting. So, so as always, I would definitely prefer to buy from a smaller breeder rather than a larger breeder just to get that one-on-one -on -one time. Also to make sure to build a relationship. Sometimes you can get, you know, first pick of clutches just because, you know, you are a loyal customer to that breeder. So keep that in mind. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about this stuff, just drop me a line, give me a comment. You know, I'm so happy when I get comments. It's what keeps me going. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you're on the team.